Hello everybody and uh, welcome to today's show. <clears throat> so today I'd like to start off kind of what I was talking about before um, in the sense of cyber attacks and cyber security. Okay. So here we see North Korea gets a second web connection via Russia firm. And remember how I was talking about North Korea and about how uh, we could not really do much with them in the cyber in the, in the terms of cyber warfare uh, they don't have much to lose they only have two web connections but we're literally dependent on digital technology all right so let's get into this article a state-owned russian company has opened up a second internet connection for north korea which could strengthen pyongyang's cyber capabilities and undermine u.s efforts to isolate the regime the security experts said all right for me this uh I, it's not about isolating North Korea from the rest of the world. This is about, this is really, we should be worried about, are they upping their capabilities of attacking us with cyber, with cyber warfare? We should be more worried about that than trying to stop them from having internet. But anyway, the activation of the new line from Trans Telecom was first detected Sunday by analysts at DIN Research, which monitors global internet connectivity. The new connection supplements the, exi the existing link provided by China Unicom, which has almost exclusively routed North Korean internet traffic since 2010. <coughs> the additional line gives Pyongyang significantly more resilience against attacks on their network infrastructure, said Bryce Boylan, the chief technology officer in the Asia Pacific for cybersecurity firm FireEye. The Washington Post reported earlier that the U.S. Cyber Command had carried out attacks against hackers in North Korea aimed at cutting off their access to the internet. The operation ended Saturday, the report said. North Korea has a, a 6,800 strong unit of trained cyber warfare specialists, according to Seoul's defense ministry, and has been accused of launching high-profile cyber attacks including the 2014 hack of Sony Pictures. That's debatable. I think Sony staged that and blamed the North Koreans, but that's not the same that them having pretty much a 7,000 strong unit of cyber specialists is not true. I think that's very true. And I think that's troubling for the United States because, like I said before, they don't have much to lose in terms of their internet going out. While we have a lot to lose, okay? But, with only one internet provider to rely on, the regime has often found itself vulnerable to external cyber attacks against its own network infrastructure. North Korea suffered several internet connection failures, some which lasted for hours, shortly after the Sony attack, which many suspect to be U.S. retaliation. With the alternate route from Russia, the possibility of disconnecting North Korea from the internet just became much more difficult. And that's not that's not the threat. All right, the threat is not North Koreans just logging on and watching the internet. Um, if anything, we would want them to see that. Uh, that way, they would see, you know, I guess what the world's really like. But that's not the case here. That's not what the real threat here is. Um, the real threat is North Korea and Russia and China would slaughter us in a, in a cyber war, and they kind of have been. Um, and we've been getting hit with rogue contractors, which goes on to my next, the next thing I wanted to point out. This is coming straight from MIT Tech Review. <clears throat> okay. The NSA has lost cyber defense details to Russian hackers. Here we go again. The Wall Street Journal reports that Russian hackers stole details <coughs> of how the National Security Agency penetrates foreign computer networks, the computer code it uses for such spying, and how it defends networks inside the U.S. From the home computer of an NSA contractor in 2015. Like I keep saying, when, when the people find out they've been hacked, it's way too late. It's years after. Anyway, perhaps the most tantalizing or troubling detail from the report is that the newspaper claims 
The files were found using an exploit in a Kaspersky Lab antivirus program on the contractor's computer. Russian software that the Department of Homeland Security recently banned for U.S. government use over security concerns. A spokesperson tells the journal that the NSA doesn't use Kaspersky antivirus software. Clearly though, such protections don't extend to the homes of contractors. Perhaps the bigger point here is that yet another contractor has been able to remove files from the NSA's network and get them into the outside world. The most famous previous offender being Edward Snowden, though more recent in Harold Martin also managed a similar feat. And when a high profile government agency keeps hemorrhaging sensitive data, that's deeply worrying. Of course, that's going to do very bad for the con game. That's going to destroy the confidence in the con game. Or as Slate puts it rather more bluntly, the US can't trust its own spy agency. Can't trust your own spy agency. Should have never trusted it anyway. They were always spying on everyone. And, and they still are. They still are. They're spying on me right now. Spying on you right now. They're spying on everybody right now. But that's beside the point. We all know that, right? As for the Kaspersky link, there are a couple of points worth bearing in mind. First, as Ars Technia points out, the newspaper provides no supporting evidence that the hack was achieved via Kaspersky software. And second, even if it was, it may have been an honest security flaw in the program rather than a deliberate backdoor built by the Russian state. But that's being generous. Now it will prove fascinating to find out if the suspicions of the Department of Homeland Security were founded all along. Okay, so DHS has been really paranoid about Russian hackers and for a good reason. I mean, they've really, they've really been owning America when it comes to the cyber warfare shit, like really destroying them. Like it's not even close. It's not even close. You remember that last article I was showing you guys about how they were hacking NATO um, iPhones, smartphones, Android in your iPhone. And, you know, if you're a NATO soldier, the Russians were able to access it and they tried to play it off like, oh yeah, well they're just using the metadata to, you know, find the location and they're hacking people's Facebooks. Trust me, they, they got some information. Believe that, because I want to show you guys this. <clears throat> Just how vulnerable everything is. Like, it's so vulnerable. Okay, let's move on to the next thing I wanted to show you guys. It was from Wired. So, you remember how Yahoo said that it was a billion accounts that got breached? Turns out it was really three billion. <laughs> Turns out probably I my my account got breached too, but I didn't have, I don't have any sensitive data on my Yahoo account, so no big deal to me. But hey, if you had a Yahoo account, you probably got breached. But anyway, let's read. When Yahoo disclosed in December that a billion, yes a billion, of its users' accounts had been compromised in an August 2013. That's more than four years ago. <laughs> More than four years ago. More than four years ago they're talking about it now. Like I keep saying it's years after the fact when you find out. Like way after the fact. But anyway. August 2013 breach it came as a staggering revelation. Now ten months later the company would like to make a correction. That incident actually exposed three billion accounts every Yahoo account that existed at the time. All of them. Every last account. <laughs> On the one hand, this new information doesn't really change things in a practical sense because the initial billion account estimate was already enormous. You could safely assume you were impacted and Yahoo took protective steps for all users in December, like resetting passwords and unencrypted security questions. On the other hand, three billion accounts? Like, yeah, 3 billion accounts is a lot. They're as big as it gets, said Jeremiah Grossman, who worked as an individual, uh, I'm sorry, as an information security officer at Yahoo for two years in the early 2000s, and is now the chief of security strategies at Sentinel One. Maybe Google, or maybe Facebook, but the next mega breach is not going to be orders of magnitude bigger. 
In this case, it took Yahoo three years to discover and disclose the breach. Uh, let me say it again. It took Yahoo three years to discover and disclose the breach. One of the biggest companies in the world, whole world. It took them three years to figure this out. And almost four years to complete the investigation. And let's not confuse all that with a separate Yahoo breach penetrated in late 2014 and not disclosed until September 2016. The impacted 500 million accounts. That impacted 500 million accounts. Wow. That alone still holds as the second biggest known breach of all time in terms of impacted users. One could argue that the Equifax breach, which impacted 145.5 million people will ultimately have greater negative overall impact because of the particularly sensitive data that was involved. The most recent disclosure also comes after Yahoo's recent acquisition by Verizon and subsequent merger with AOL. I don't know if you guys know, AIM just shut down. Anyway. Disclosing two enormous breaches back to back at the end of 2016 put a strain on the acquisition process and even reportedly led Verizon to demand a price reduction. Wow. Wow. <laughs> even though $3 billion sounds like a dramatic number, Grossman argues that it shouldn't come as a surprise. To everybody on the outside, it looked to us when we originally read all the information that the breach must have impacted all those accounts. He says, the attackers got so deep in the system, I couldn't imagine why certain accounts wouldn't have been affected and not others. Yahoo published information about the revision on its account security update page, attempting to clarify the timeline of events subsequent to Yahoo's acquisition by Verizon and during integration. The company recently obtained new intelligence and now believes following an investigation with the assistance of outside forensics experts that Yahoo user accounts were affected by the August 2013 theft the company wrote. Alright, so I'm just going to leave it there. This is, this is more to my point. Again, <clears throat> Yahoo is one of the biggest companies out there. Okay? And they're vulnerable. They, they, I mean, they got owned twice. And it took them four years to tell you that they got owned. It, it took them years to even find out. And then it took them more years to, to muster up the courage and say, we've been breached. Because you just saw the breach happening back to back lowered the value of the company. Okay? And let me show you again how vulnerable, just how vulnerable your phone is. Your phone is so vulnerable. Okay? Moving on to the telegraph. Siri and Alexa can be hijacked with, with audible messages. Okay? Let's read the article. Researchers have discovered a way to hijack smartphone assistance using sounds inaudible to the human ear, raising security concerns about the voice activated devices. Amazon's Alexa, Apple Siri, and Google's Assistant, as well as home help from Samsung and Huawei, are affected by the problem. That's all as every single digital voice assistant all of them which could let hackers take control of devices and command them to conduct tasks such as downloading malicious software or opening the front door Whew. wow researchers from Zhejiang University were able to take over popular gadgets including iPhones and MacBooks running Siri newer Galaxy smartphones with Bixby Amazon Echo speakers and PCs running Windows 10 with Cortana. That's all of them. That's all of them. That's literally all of them. And this is what I was going to show you guys on, on, the, on the next on my next slide is uh, this video. So you know what? Let me stop talking about it and let me show you. Let me better show you what what, what this does. All right. Just look at this.
They locked the phone. This is a locked phone. Are you hearing any of this? It's nothing. You didn't even hear any of that. They, there's no sounds involved with any of that. Well, let's continue with the article. <clears throat> they turn voice command into ultrasonic frequencies that can be heard and used to control devices but are inaudible to humans. Using methods, the researchers were able to tell an iPhone to call that number, 1234567890 and order a MacBook and Nexus 7 to open up a malicious website. Now that's more troubling. That's more troubling. The problem is both in the hardware, which can pick up the ultrasonic sound and the software, which should be able to distinguish between human speech and computer generated noises. How did it know? Computers are stupid. In most cases, the sound can only be picked up if they are coming from a source a few inches from the device. But in some instances, the researchers were able to conduct the attack from several feet away. For example, with the Apple Watch. You don't like, oh, look, for those of you guys that live in, around in big cities like New York, Chicago, um, Los Angeles, um, Philadelphia, even Houston, right? Nashville, even 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 places like that, right? You could be walking around and somebody, the same way people have little card readers in their pocket and you don't know about it, somebody could hijack your phone, just bump right into you, right? It, I mean, they just need to get the device close enough to you and they got you. It doesn't take long at all. But anyway, in a similar study by Princeton and Cornell Universities, researchers managed to command the Google Pixel phone to take a picture and turn on airplane mode, as well as ask Alexa for the weather and what's on the shopping list from a distance of two to three meters. Separate research from MWR Security last month showed the Amazon Echo can be turned into a spying device using a hardware flaw in the first version. <laughs> and you want to be honest with you, it's always been a spying device. That's what, this, <laughs> that's what this technology is made to do. Concerned customers can avoid using listening devices in public or turn off voice assistant functions. I've completely turned mine off. I was never, because they're, 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 they're spying on me. You know what I'm saying? I'm just not beat for opting in for the spying. But, you know, I, I'm just trying to highlight to you guys how vulnerable everything is and this whole idea of America and, and we being invincible and we can't be touched by the North Koreans or the Russians in terms of digital cyber warfare. They would destroy us. They, they can decimate our country. They can't see us militarily, obviously. I'm saying they, it's not like they can invade America with ground troops, right? And win won't happen. But could they economically destroy us? Could they hack our power grids? Could they could they decimate us from our smartphones? <laughs> I mean, it seems pretty obvious to me. Because let me ask you this, right? A lot of people try to laugh off the thing, right? Like, oh yeah, I mean, if I lost all my money and my smartphone and my electronics, like, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I know for a lot of y'all it would be. Me personally, it wouldn't, because I know how to survive out in the wilderness. Uh, you know, I know what to eat. I'm, I'm, I'm a vegan, so I, I know what plants to forage, and I'll be fine eating that, okay? But for the rest of y'all, I mean, I can only imagine what you would do if you couldn't check your bank account for two months and you had no idea where you were going to get your next meal from huh? Now, I'd like to see how long you survive with that but signing off saying that um, I'm going to start I'm not sure exactly how I want to do this okay but I'm going to start my segment it's going to be called um, what the conscious community is not teaching you I'm thinking about doing that as a live streaming event and um, yeah I'm, I'm not exactly sure I want to do it but I feel like I need to do this uh, and this is something nobody's talking about and it, it drives me insane because everybody has one of these fucking devices everybody's online why is nobody talking about this, this is something that affects all of us
This is something that is very important. Because I'm, look, if you're watching this video, you're probably watching this on, uh, and, no, you're definitely watching this on an internet connected device that is vulnerable to this, okay? Trust me on that. All right, whether it be on your laptop, your desktop, or your phone. That device is vulnerable to an attack. You watching, you listening to me right now, you are vulnerable to an attack as we speak. So, I'm talking to you. This affects you. This affects everybody here in this country, okay? So, with that, peace out, guys. I'm going to start the with the kind community is not teaching you. I think I'm going to move into uh, Raspberry Pi. That's going to be the next video I make. I might make that video today. I might make that video right after I make this video. So, peace out, guys.